good morning students so we'll move on to the next topic that is standard io interfaces fine so this is what uh, the last topic of module number 2 computer organization clear standard io interface fine so from the first topic of uh, module number 2 accessing io devices and all we were continuously studying regarding interface circuit right okay so up to now we discussed lot many different types of interface circuits over there one is for parallel one is for serial okay for output one kind for input another kind okay so these are the different interface circuit we already discussed in that right so now what we need to do we need to go for designing a standard one which should be suitable for all the kind of devices exactly clear okay so we'll begin based on the previous discussion we came to know that there are several alternative designs for the bus of a computer okay so like we need to have a uh, dma controller we need to have a interface aspect bus arbitration synchronous bus asynchronous bus see a lot of varieties of buses are also available lot many different types of devices are also available okay so by considering this so this variety means input and output device fitted with an interface circuit suitable for one computer may not be usable with other computers fine so we are using multiple number of interfaces over here we are using different different versions of bus cable over here right okay so now if you are designing uh, one architecture for one system okay it may it may not be suitable for any other system okay so what we need to do we need to go for designing a standard one over here okay so we'll begin a different interface may have to be designed for every combination of input and output device okay and computer resulting in many different interfaces fine so if you start designing a different interfaces for different kind of devices and all then will we end up with lot many different kinds of interface circuits over here so what we need to do the practical solution is to develop a standard interface and protocols clear so what we need to do we need to go for a developing a standard interface and some working principle which should handle all these different varieties of devices over here. the processor bus is the bus defined by the signal on the processor chip itself remember so here we are going to discuss regarding two different types of a bus fine so first one we call it as what a processor bus okay where exactly the processor will be connected and inside that bus okay uh, the signals of processor will be roaming around remember okay so the second bus i will tell you later okay what is the second bus exactly then later devices that require a very high speed connection uh, to the processor can be connected to this bus due to electrical reason only few devices can be connected in this fashion or in this format fine so as i mentioned we will be having two different types of buses available over here see in previous discussion we had only single bus structure right okay we got only one uh, bus cable for that we are connecting all our functional units okay but when we are going in deep to the topics okay and in the different modules and all okay we will be getting a complete picture like internally they are not single remember okay there will be multiple number of buses over there for achieving the better performance that's it okay nothing else remember clear okay so now uh, right now we have a information like we have a bus and that bus we are calling it as a processor bus okay to which the processor is directly connected and along with that along with that few more devices are also connected who are expecting very high speed connection remember okay those who are expecting a very high speed connection towards the processor they will be connected directly to this particular processor bus exactly okay so you may ask like why we cannot connect all the uh, functional units to this processor bus itself okay there are some electrical reasons okay why we cannot connect uh, the all the functional units there. so what we do we are maintaining remember okay those who are expecting a better performance or those who are expecting a fast service they will be connected to the processor bus okay and who is expecting bit less they will be managed in separate line over there separate bus cable over there okay we'll see that what is that bus cable the motherboard provides another bus to connect other devices observe it carefully the motherboard provides another bus to connect other devices the second bus uh sorry the two buses are 
connected by a circuit called bridge clear okay so here we are maintaining two different buses the first one we called as processor bus and second one we are calling it as a normal bus okay we are not yet named it okay we will name in next slide okay later we will name uh, start naming them okay so that second bus and the first bus okay both are interconnected using a circuit called as what bridge exactly okay now you got a clear picture like the processor along with the processor those who are expecting a high rate of data transmission high speed uh, response okay from the processor they will be connected to the processor bus okay those who are expecting bit less okay they will be connected to a second bus okay and between this first bus and the second bus we are having a circuit intermediate okay or else a mediator uh, well, like circuit we have okay that we are calling it as a bridge exactly clear okay so now we we'll move on to the next slide bridge translates the signals and protocols of one bus into those of others okay the job of this particular bridge is what to establish a connection between first bus and the second bus okay like if processor want to communicate with the devices of a second bus which are connected to the second bus okay then obviously this bridge will be responsible for this okay so he will be uh, translating the signals from first bus to the second bus same thing if second bus device want to communicate with the first bus device then the bridge will be acting like a mediator over there okay so that is what the main job of bridge okay so we'll discuss regarding this bridge in further topics in the okay so when we are discussing about a scsi bus okay there you will be having a better knowledge about bridge exactly okay later uh, devices connected to the expansion bus appears to the processor as if they were connected directly to the processor own bus okay so uh, whatever the devices we are connecting for that second bus right okay they feel that they are directly connected to the processor bus itself but practically they are not remember okay so that is what the job of our bridge okay he is responsible for this uh, this feature here yeah. okay so uh, they will be acting like or they will be communicating as if they are directly connected to the processor bus itself but they are not connected to the processor bus itself remember the only difference is that the bridge circuit introduces a small delay in the data transfer between the processor and those devices remember this okay uh, but we have one small drawback that is uh, the devices uh, which are connected to the second bus will feel a transmission delay okay due to the bridge circuit remember this a small delay fine uh, but the devices those who are connected to the processor bus they won't feel any delay okay because no need to cross any particular circuit any particular gates okay and all okay so they won't feel any kind of a delay over there but in case of second bus they will feel okay so here uh, we got uh, three different interfaces okay so first one we call it as pci second we call it as scsi and third one we call it as usb exactly the first one peripheral component interconnect okay second one the small computer system interface okay scsi stand for usb means universal serial bus okay so nowadays we are at universal serial bus but we need to study regarding pci and scsi also remember so pci uh standard defines an expansion bus on the motherboard scsi uses uh scsi uses it for high speed parallel bus okay for devices such as disk and video display then usb for serial transmission of data exactly okay so this pci uh we are using it for as using as what the expansion bus or that second bus exactly remember okay then this scsi we are using it for a parallel transmission okay uh if you want to communicate with a disk and a video devices okay who are expecting a high rate data transmission okay there we are using a scsi bus okay and uh we are using a pci like peripheral component interconnect okay so he is responsible for that second bus exam okay so now we'll go for a block diagram of standard io interface okay so this is what we are calling it as a processor bus for which processor and main memory is connected okay so this is what the bridge between processor bus and the second bus okay see the second bus we are calling it as pci bus peripheral component interconnect okay see these are the different peripheral components which we are connecting it to the pci bus exactly okay what is the job of bridge bridge circuit translates signals and protocols from processor bus to pci bus exactly okay like from here it will translate to pci bus pci bus to 
process that works, obviously. Okay, see, this is like India and China exactly. Okay, now Chinese want to communicate with India, then they will need to have a converter over. Same thing. Okay, then less. Uh, then uh, next, the expansion bus on the motherboard. So this we are calling it as the expansion bus. You can find see additional memories, CUSI controller, Ethernet interface, USB controller, ISA interface. Okay, so for this CUSI controller, okay, see we are using CUSI bus. So this we will discuss in next uh, slide exactly. Fine. So these are the different components we are connecting to our PCI bus exactly. Okay, see. Uh, you may ask me why we cannot connect all these devices, all those five different uh, like industrial standard architecture, ISA, okay, universal serial bus controller, Ethernet interface, okay, uh, small uh, computer system interface, okay, then additional memory. All these we can connect to processor bus also, okay, but we have some restriction, okay. If you want to connect any particular device for this processor bus, we have some restriction regarding this, okay. That's why we manage them separately. Yeah, so this is what a block diagram of standard interface circuit, okay, so which indicates the PCI bus, CUSI bus and USB, there we have, here we have USB, okay, so here, from here, uh, the further topic will be regarding the PCI bus, what is PCI bus, what is the job of PCI bus, how the data transmission takes place using a uh, PCI bus, later device configuration, regarding that also we have some information, okay, then later we go for a CUSI controller, how the device and uh, the video high, like high definition video uh, devices okay will be uh, communicating to the processor using this CUSI controller or CUSI bus will discuss this okay and at last we are the USB okay that will finish your module number two exam okay so after this block diagram we'll go for peripheral component interconnection uh, bus exactly okay so this bus is a synchronous bus okay which works based on a timing signal clear okay synchronous bus then later large bandwidth we call it as fine uh, the data transmission capacity will be huge okay that's why we are naming it as what large bandwidth okay so we'll go through this pci support the function found on the processor bus but in a standardized format that is independent of any particular processor remember okay the processor bus from this particular slide so what is the job performed by this processor bus right okay same thing will be performed by uh, our PCI bus also, okay, but uh, the thing is, our PCI bus is independent of processor exactly, okay. So devices connected feels that they are directly connected to processor bus and also they are assigned of addresses, okay. So the devices, whatever we are connecting here, yeah, okay, so everyone will be assigned of some address, local address, remember, okay, here some kind of address will be assigned, here also, here also, everywhere, okay. So internally, some other devices also we are connecting. Okay, they are defined local to their interface circuit. Remember, okay. So that is how we are assigning some addresses over there. But address is must remember. Okay. So whenever processor want to communicate with any particular interface or any particular device, first they will be targeting for the controllers or the interface. Remember. Then internally inside this controller or inside this interface okay those particular target will be having their own individual identification address code okay so that will be identified so when we are discussing this CUSI controller then we will be having better knowledge about this addressing and all okay so later after assigning the address okay they should be assigned with address okay fine so it's designed anticipated rapidly growing demand for uh, bus bandwidth to support high speed desk graphical video display devices uh also multiprocessor system so okay so this we can overcome okay by the uh, like incorporating the pci or pci interface okay or else uh pci bus okay so these are all three what uh, main demands we have like high, sp uh, high speed data transfer and graphical video devices okay data transfer of uh, output uh, information okay then later multiprocessor system okay whatever the requirement was there Okay, that was overcome by uh, proposing this particular bus exactly. Okay, then later, important feature is plug and play capability uh, for connecting IO devices. Okay, so plug and play. Okay, just plug them. Okay, it will start working. Fine. So that is what uh, the one best functionality of PCI bus exactly. Okay, but uh, some devices are there, some uh, like interfaces are there, those who expect. Uh, restarting the system because they need to relaunch the drivers okay uh, but in case of pci and usb okay we have a flexibility regarding plug and play remember 
okay see intermediate like if you want to plug your mouse okay when you start your system also okay you may be working with uh, touchpad right okay you may be working with touchpad uh, for using the mouse cursor okay but you may not feel comfortable with that okay later in middle if you want to connect your usb uh, mouse okay then it is fine okay like we no need to restart your system so that you can detect the mouse exactly okay just plug it will start working over right okay that feature is also available in peripheral component interconnect bus exactly okay so we don't have a much discussion regarding pci but we have in deep discussion regarding SCI and usb exactly then data transport when it comes for the data transport data transfer signals on the pci bus okay so these are the few signals okay which we are using if you want to transfer a uh, data in uh, through uh, pci bus the clock we have like a33 megahertz clock we are using over here then frame we call okay this is what a signal okay so this will be sent by initiator to indicate uh, the duration of the transaction okay so what is the duration of the transaction that will be identified using this particular uh, signal exactly then ad32 so this is what the address or a data line okay so that is what the signal okay address of the device if you want to send okay ad uh, we can use the signal which is a 32 bit address or 32 bit data line exactly then C or B E we are using that is what a four command or a byte enable uh, line we are using over here. Okay, whether it is a byte enable or bit enable. Okay, regarding that we will be getting the complete information regarding this. Then I ready, anti ready, initiator ready, and target ready. Okay, so these are the two different uh, signals. Okay, which indicates like whether initiator is ready to have a data transfer and target is whether it is ready to have a data transfer regarding that we are asking. Later, device cell. Okay, response. Uh, from the device indicating that it has recognized its address and it is ready for a data transfer. Okay, so that is one the indication of device cell. Okay, then uh, ID cell we are using initiator device select. Okay, initiator device select. ID cell means initiator device select it is. Okay, so device cell means uh, DEV SEL we are calling it as response from the device indicating that it has recognized its address and it is ready for the data transfer means device we are selected already we are selected okay for that response also we call okay regarding that one so these are the few signals we are using for data transfer using pci exactly so here we got one more point at any given time one device is the bus master okay so it has the right to initiate data transfer by issuing read and write command master is called an initiator in pci okay the address device that responds to read and write commands is called a target Okay, so one who is uh, like referred exactly, okay, for the data transfer, like sender and a receiver, that receiver will be called as the target and sender we are calling it as initiator, remember this. Okay, At last, device configuration, this is very important, when an IO device is connected to a computer, several actions are needed uh, to configure both the device and the software end, okay, uh, if it want to communicate properly, exactly. Okay, so we'll see that what are the different aspects we need to concentrate or uh, we need to configure once the device is connected the software need to know the address of the device first thing okay so whenever uh, we are connecting or we are adding a new devices to our system obviously the address of that should be defined or our address of that uh, device using that okay it should introduce itself remember okay so that uh, the system can identify that later if user want to target that particular device okay it should be able to recognize okay for that device address is very important so it may also need to know relevant uh, device characteristics okay like whether it is working with a parallel fashion whether it is working with a serial fashion okay so data transmission weight and all regarding that complete information should be available with our uh, pci bus exactly okay such as speed of the transfer link okay then parity bits are used or not okay so these are the few information what do you mean by parity bits see uh, like due to some uh, error some bits will be changing to zero exactly zero to one okay sometimes okay while transmission so if you are adding a parity bit using that we can easy, easily identify that whether uh, the error has occurred or not okay regarding that we'll be getting a complete information okay then data simplify this process by incorporating uh, in each io device interface okay a small configuration raw memory that stores uh, information about that device okay so what we need to do if you want to have a uh, these kind of introduction from device to the uh, PCI bus or a full system, what we need to do, we need to have some small configuration ROM, okay. So by reading that ROM, okay, the complete information regarding that device should be available with the system. Yeah, okay, it is just like uh, we are having a notebook, okay. Over a notebook, we are having our name, class, semester, subject, okay, place, 
college name okay any other okay just an introduction okay like uh, okay one one textbook we have okay over that we are having like professor pusa uh, computer science department at atm patel okay so this indicates that yes it belong to a person who is working for atm college okay so inside atm college will be having a personal uh, address uh, like department address then inside a department individual address also okay. okay so it defines uh, uh, like it will help okay this kind of rob will help us to uh, identify the devices over there okay so that is uh, the configuration rom we are using over here remember okay so which will help us your uh, motherboard or your system to identify the devices and to understand what kind of device it is whether it is working with a passion of parallel or serial okay regarding that also we will be getting complete information later the last point the pci uh, initialization uh, sorry the pci initialization initialization uh, software reads this rom okay whenever the system is powered up or reset okay so whenever we are starting our system okay then continuously uh, you are uh, the pci okay the software will be continuously uh, reading this particular rom of different devices to know whether they are connected whether they are disconnected okay uh, like when we start the system and when we restart the system reset stand for what when we restart okay it can learn about various device options and characteristics okay so this is what some device configuration in data transfer fashion uh, if you are using the pci interface over here clear okay uh, so this is for our students so we'll meet with uh, the next video of scusi bus okay scusi bus exactly fine okay thank you students